Hello everyone and welcome to the round glass review for the Canon new FD 35mm f2.8. This is not like a new version of the FD 35mm 2.8. There was not a 35mm f2.8 until the FD mount was converted to the, the new FD mount. So that's what that part means. Insofar as I can find, this lens was released in 1979 with the first mention I could find of it from late 78 in a new or upcoming releases note from Canon to distributors. I could not find when production ended, but it would be easy to believe this lens was made until the end of new FD lens production in 1990. Typical lens uses are slightly wide subjects like street photography, general shooting, travel, and related wide normal use. Travel, honestly, it's probably this lens's best use due to the near ideal focal length for travel and the small size and low weight. For your bottom line up front, this was the second smallest and lightest new FD lens Canon produced and it makes few if any compromises on image quality. This lens consistently delivered sharp images and striking colors across the camera systems, subjects, and uses I put to it. Focal length and AOV are 35 millimeters and 63.4 degrees on full frame, an equivalent of 53 millimeters and 44.4 degrees on APS-C. Aperture range is 2.8 through 22. Element and group count are six and five. The design type is retrofocus. Filter size is 52 millimeters. The closest focus is 0.35 meters, which in the US is one bald eagle tail feather. Yes, freedom. Drive type is manual focus only. The native mount is Canon FD New, also called Canon FD lowercase n. Dimensions are 63 millimeters by 40 millimeters, and the weight is 165 grams. My first tip is going to be familiar to mirrorless users who like wide lenses and watch this channel. A macro adapter for your mirrorless mount will make this lens more useful as a general purpose lens, and a macro adapter can get very nice magnification and close-up shots from this lens. As an added benefit, this lens is sharp enough that focusing closer than the design specifications, such as with a macro adapter, does not reduce overall image sharpness with macro and very close photos. Next up, for general use, this is a highly useful lens with stunning performance across the metrics, color and sharpness being the two most important. This lens holds up quite well on digital sensors as well as film, and if you're shooting up to 35 megapixels or so, this lens will probably exceed your needs or expectations. Now, I don't have a higher resolution camera than that, but I could see this lens being a little bit less capable on something more than 40 megapixels. If you're using this lens for travel, the hyperfocal distance is very usable. At f22, you can focus from as close as about 0.8 meters to infinity, but with some noticeable sharpness loss. At f16, however, you only lose a bit on the near end of your focus range and still have a focus of 1.25 meters to infinity. That is a good place to be for this lens for quick shots, and I used it at that setting for many of the street photos in this video. One last tip, as we're going to see in the next section for you APS-C shooters, this lens has near-perfect technical performance across the APS-C image area, so that format and smaller, you can expect to have magnificent performance from this lens on your camera. Taking a look at the DOTS test chart, we see center performance, which is functionally perfect, and that holds up for an area approximately the size of an APS-C image sensor. From the image center to a point A here more than 2,000 pixels on a sensor that's 7,008 pixels wide, the dots exhibit no flaws. At the approximate boundary of the APS-C image area, the lens begins to exhibit very minor chromatic aberration on the order of three pixels across. At the corners, we do see a hint of coma mixed with some slight sagittal astigmatism, but the chromatic aberrations have dissipated or been lost to the lens's light loss. Overall, this lens's performance is quite good for what would have been a mid-market offering compared to the higher spec 35mm f2 lens of the same vintage. Looking at the Boca Balls test photos where the lens is first focused at infinity and then at the nearest light it can focus on, we notice something quite remarkable. There is almost no performance difference in blurry source point lights. This confirms what the earlier tests have shown, namely that this lens is spectacularly engineered from an image capture perspective. This was 
such a hard diagram to find. Anyway, I did, and here it is, a pretty standard air-gapped late 70s retrofocus lens design. This lens uses small elements in that, plus the air gap, keep the weight very low. Overall, by the time this lens arrived on the market, the 35mm focal length lens class of retrofocus designs was pretty well researched, and this lens demonstrates that this optical design could perform quite well on SLRs. Breathing is remarkably well controlled, especially given that this test uses the closest focus point to 0.7 meters beyond. For video, especially for amateurs or students, this lens could be highly useful. Aperture is stepped and half-stop detents, but being an FDN lens, mirrorless adapters typically have an aperture control ring that would allow this lens to be used as a preset with smooth aperture closing to that preset point, if aperture changes are needed for a shot. The front element is non-rotating, but does move in and out a hair less than 6 millimeters, which is 17% of the focal length. Focus throw is 130 degrees with a stationary and comfortable to grip focusing ring. Focus damping is minimal and this lens focus is a bit too easy for my taste, though that said your experience may vary based on lens use and care over the years. The autofocus effect on audio is not applicable because this is a manual focus lens, though mine makes a faint sound of plastic on plastic as the focus ring is shifted and that could be loud enough to impair on-camera audio. Sharpness is exceptional, especially in the central half of the frame. Corners are a bit softer, but in a manner that adds a lot to the image character. Build quality, like most consumer tier FDN lenses, is not my favorite. The lens is light due to the plastic housing and the moving parts feel a bit plasticky and chintzy. Contrast is exceptional straight out of the camera, and this translates into nice colors and backs up this lens's ability to deliver good image sharpness. Aperture stars begin to manifest at f4 and then decline in quality from there. f5.6 delivers no stars, with just some blobs around the light, and the balance of the aperture settings deliver fans instead of stars. Ultimately, this is not a strong suit for this lens. Out-of-focus areas can be wonderful and lovely when focused close, especially using a macro adapter and at f2.8. Stopping down even slightly and having anything shy of very close focus will convert the blurry areas into a bit of a jumble. Distortion, allowing for a slight misalignment between the graph paper and sensor, is there and slightly barrel. In real-world use, the distortion this lens exhibits is unlikely to impair images, even architecture or photos with straight lines on the perimeters. Light loss when photographing a white screen up close with this lens at infinity focus is present at f2.8 and f4, functionally gone by f5.6, and performance in this regard remains consistent through the balance of the aperture settings. Flare and ghosting never manifested in the images that I took with this lens, even without a lens hood. Balance with cameras is good, owing to how light this lens is, and despite the small size, the large focus ring makes it still a joy to use. I think this will be no surprise to frequent channel viewers. I am very mixed on my feelings about Canon OEM FDN lenses. Many of them I do not like, and find that the build quality and apparent design that makes repairing these lenses very hard are a disservice to photographers. Also, I find that, optically, most of the FDN lenses I've used do not perform in a manner that aligns with my creative ideas for my photography. This lens is a striking exception to that, and it is the best Canon OEM FDN lens I've used. To that point, if you wanted to buy just one Canon OEM FDN lens, I would say start here. The Canon FDN 35mm f2.8 is a staggeringly good performer that few people would find reasons to dislike when it comes to overall image performance and quality. Where this lens fails a bit is in the build quality. Canon appears to have taken some, let's be kind and say shortcuts, with this lens overall construction, and that is, by the way, true writ large of many of the especially consumer-grade FDN lenses. That same criticism, however, will likely be echoed by me each time we discuss a consumer-grade FDN lens. Where this lens shines, though, especially is in travel photography, and I loved taking this lens overseas with me because it could fit easily into a cargo pocket, weighs so little as to allow it to go easily unnoticed, 
and it performs in a class far above the consumer-grade specs and build quality it delivers. This may be, probably is, honestly, my favorite FDN lens, and I have to imagine that most FDN lens users who look empirically at how this lens performs would likely share a similar sentiment.